Welcome ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're all doing well. And today, my friends, we're here with a showdown between the Delhi Sultanate and the Abbasid Dynasty. So it's going to be myself and the Delhi facing off against the Abbasid here on the south side of the map. So as far as all the business goes here on the Black Forest, this is a map that's pretty insane because with the deep water fish as well as the safe shoreline fish you have at the back of your base, you can tech up to the Castle Age incredibly quickly. You guys probably have seen the replay on my channel probably a month or two ago now. Man, it's been a while, I guess a couple weeks. Uh, but it was the HRE and getting to the Castle Age at like 7 minutes and 45 seconds and then suddenly the Burgrave Palace is like launching just big thick men-at-arms at your base which can be very scary. So pretty much every Civ can do it on this map. Some a little bit faster than others but again uh, with Delhi Sultanate you can really take advantage of just the mega fast tech by also getting the early sacred sites in the middle of the map. So if you haven't seen it, we'll show you here in a second. They do have the Sanctity upgrade, which I think is one of my favorite techs in the entire game. It is unique to the Delhi Sultanate. So this allows, allows scholars to capture sacred sites before the Castle Age. So typically if you're playing HRE or the Rus, both are civs who like to get those sacred sites. The Rus using their very fast warrior monks to get there. And of course the HRE can get the prelates in the Dark Ages and Feudal Ages and have them positioned when they get to the Castle Age. But with the good old Delhi Sultanate, you can get them in the Dark Ages and the Feudal Ages very, very quickly. And not only do you capture them earlier, but you also do get 100% more gold. So if you have like one Sacred Site, honestly, in the early game, that's going to be enough to kind of carry you through. You can allocate all your extra workers to lumber or to stone if you want to do a second TC, and it's a pretty cost-effective situation. Now, as far as the build order goes, I basically just went for a house, a mosque, as well as a lumber camp to get the very fast forestry upgrade. If I was playing on a normal map, what I would do is build all of these, plus also the berry bush gathering, so the uh, gathering mill here to get the wheelbarrow right away. But in this case, since uh, the water is so important on this map, if you do not play the water on the Black Forest, you're basically just going to lose the game. Your opponent's going to have just massive, massive food advantage on you, and you're going to be having a bad time. So we got all the free research going, got fishing ships coming out, life's good, and now looking at my opponent here on the south side of the map, basically doing the same thing. And the Abbasid can usually get a slight edge on your opponents in terms of fishing because their docks only cost 50 lumber. So taking a look here at the Abbasid uh, dock, or 75, excuse me, I always say 50, but it's half the cost of a standard dock. Now here a little bit of scouting going on. Basically myself, I'm just looking for the sacred sites. And more importantly, I also want to see where I can wall my opponent off. So on my on this map, I love to play Delhi and just rush spearmen in the Dark Ages, move them up and wall my opponent in their base. It is incredibly funny. Unfortunately for me though, the spawn actually isn't great. If you look here in the middle, there's like a giant bowling alley and uh, some, some bowling pins in the middle as well here via the relics. Hopefully we'll be able to get a strike and catch those bad boys, but walling my opponent in here is not going to be easy. There's a massive, massive just like alleyway. So this is like, I feel like if Black Forest spawned like this more often, people wouldn't dislike it as much. I've noticed that a lot of players in the beginning really liked it, but um, in many of the tournaments I've held, the players have often voiced their discontent for this map. I don't know if it pertains to the rapid rate at which people can essentially tech to the Castle Age, which I actually find kind of interesting, or if it's just the prevalence of jokes and how it can stall out games and they can get a little bit grindy. Personally, I find that kind of interesting just to see a little bit more of a you know longer style of play whereas oftentimes in like arabia and these other maps all ins are just super common and the games end in like you know 10 to 15 20 minutes in that like ballpark when people start to get the uh, siege engineering upgrade or if the abbasid you just get it for free now for my opponent his golden age is uh, getting rolling and the way this works if you guys are new to the game the abbasid do not build landmarks rather they have their house of wisdom and each of these wings actually unlocks uh, the next age, but also unlocks a whole line of research. Although I believe a couple of the research texts for the Abbasid are a little bit buggy right now, so hopefully that'll be something that gets fixed soon. But yeah, Abbasid are pretty cool. And the more buildings that you have in your big Sim City here, so taking a look here, you can see the ones that do have the plus signs over their head. Those are all within the influence of the Golden Age. And once you get 10 buildings in your Golden Age aura, this is going to be giving you 10% gather rate, and then eventually you get research and production speed. It's pretty cool. So here I do have my first Spearman coming out. This guy's a, he's a brave man chasing down this scout right here. And uh, my opponent, I think, accidentally misclicking on that deer. Not quite sure. But uh, now I'm going to be going for that juicy, juicy sacred control. And we do have a constant stream of Spearmen. My tech to the next age will be a little bit behind my opponent. He's certainly going to be ahead, right? Looking at current resources, he currently has 130. I haven't even mined any gold yet. And I think I'm a little bit behind in terms of food being banked, although it looks kind of even. Yeah, he's just pumping out villagers. And now he is going to the culture wing. And I'm not even like thinking about get, getting to the next age yet, but I'm investing in early map control. And the Delhi Sultanate has a really cool trait where the Spearman here 
can actually build walls, and uh, I love this so much. I've always been kind of a defensive, like, macro-style player in general. In StarCraft, I used to play very, very defensive Terran builds, as well as defensive Protoss builds, you know, get, like, two or three bases and then do a counter push. So, like, early all-ins really isn't my style of play, and I find that I'm not really the best at it. So, you know, I like the Delhi Sultanate because they, they really suit my style of play. So here we're going to be choking this off. On the Black Forest, this is quite nice. So if my opponent wants to get to this, he has to come through or go all the way around. And now this absolute G of a Scholar is going to be jumping on the Sacred Site. And that will be going here and giving me the goodies. So we will see how that unfolds as we fast forward. The other Spearman goes through. And I was like, you know what? Screw it. Let's make the Great Wall of Delhi. So we are going to be setting up the Great Wall here in the forest. My opponent uh, just now getting his barracks. He is in the second age, super far ahead of me in that regard. However, I am going to have him walled in, and he's most likely going to build archers because that's what most people do to counter spearmen. And he did see me building spearmen in the Dark Ages. As such, probably going to be seeing archers coming out, and then suddenly there's just this giant wall that the archers can't break. So I was super happy about this. On top of that, my income per minute, I am getting 304 gold, 200 of which is actually coming from the sacred sites. And uh, that's really, really strong. Just getting a ton of free gold. That means I can allocate my workers elsewhere. And now we are going to be building up the Dome of Faith, which is hands down the best landmark for the Delhi in Age 2. It essentially gives you scholars at 50% less cost, which you can use in your mosque, you can use in your other production buildings. And uh, now I'm just like, you know what? Screw it. We, we've already gone pretty deep in walling him here. So let's go ahead and just wall him in completely. So <laughs> the dreaded Delhi Wally coming in. And he built a barracks, yeah, two barracks to make his own spearmen. So it looks like he's going to be trying to break out of the gatehouse here. And now my spearmen from the Dark Ages, I believe I have five of them, are going to be setting up the Great Wall of Delhi, which has completely contained my opponent. So he is indeed trapped in his uh, his cage here. And despite, <laughs> despite all his rage, he is still but an Abbasid here in the cage. So pretty good fishing economy for him. It looks like in total he does have 12 fishing boats to my 8. So he's a little bit ahead of me there. I haven't been investing my extra wood in the Great Wall in, so hopefully it'll pay off. There's a chance that he might just bunker bust it. The Abbasid are pretty good at busting through walls because they can get battering rams like super quickly. Uh, as soon as they hit the you know second age, they can essentially have a spearman out and build a battering ram right away, whereas other civs have to research siege engineering. And he looks like he is going to be doing a push. Yeah, he's got friggin' two archery ranges, two barracks here. And I'm just sitting pretty on one barracks right now. So really, I'm putting a lot of marbles. And these spearmen are like, let's peace out. Let's get out of here and check this out. So my scholar hustled all the way around the top of the map, grabbed the sacred site. And now all of these spearmen here are walling this in as well. So, you know, you know how I like to look at the Delhi Sultanate. I like to look at them as like an onion that your opponent has to peel. You know, you make them peel more and more layers. And then eventually maybe they'll cry and have a bad time. That's kind of how I like to play Delhi, especially on the Black Forest. And eventually, you know, when they peel the final layer, at that time, hopefully the tech and the inner workings of your uh, metaphorical onion are just super powerful, right? So check this out. We're going to the next age already. So the House of Learning is coming up and I'm like, screw it, let's go deep, baby, because I saw he was going super hard in the paint with tech military infrastructure, which is like the biggest hell for an Abbasid all in. So I knew I couldn't really fight him efficiently at this age. So I was like, let's get to the next age. Let's go super hard here and just get a bunch of barracks and pump out men at arms because the House of Learning here, my age three landmark actually has some really cool research that makes the Delhi men at arms and knights just far superior to their uh, counterparts, with the exception of maybe the Holy Roman Empire. Now we do have a barracks here. I was gonna be going double blacksmith to get the upgrades. With Delhi, you typically wanna do that, right? I now have uh, three scholars or two scholars in my mosque here. We do have uh, some coming out of the Dome of Faith here in a second. I think if I look here, switch to my perspective, you should see them coming. Uh, but nonetheless, we do have two here and the House of Learning is finished. So we have the Honed Blades, which gives three damage to my men at arms. We do also have the Lookout Towers for sight range. The Mosque one is really good, the Tranquil Venue. It actually serves as like a hospital and the Reinforced Foundations gives your houses and town centers additional supply, which is pretty good. It like, you know, gives you a nice little bump there. But uh, my opponent is coming. I saw him pushing through. I saw the Spearmen trying to escape their cage here and you can see these guys trying to get in. He doesn't really know what's going on too much. He knows I have both of the Sacred Sites and they are going to be generating a fair amount of resources for me. So my gold income right now is super good. It's 400, and I have like no one on gold right now. I think I have like absolutely no workers on that. So that means I am going to be able to do a little bit better in some regards, hopefully. But nonetheless, the gold should be able to trade it in. I'm in the third age. He's in the second. I'm still behind on score, though, because of just how much he's producing, right? You can see he's building battering rams. I saw the camel archer, and I was like, all right, let's keep walling. So we're building another wall here. And just layers, man. Just like that's the whole principle. Just make him get through these layers. If he wants to go straight to my base, he's going to be giving me the sacred sites. If he goes to the sacred sites, it gives me more time for my tech. You have to kind of give your opponent a little bit of a conundrum here. 
So another barracks coming up, also a stables, I think. No, we go barracks and then we do go stables. So I've been trying to play a lot more recently without using spring alts, right? Just using like infantry and then using uh, the horsemen to chase down the spring alts. And it's honestly been pretty effective. I find that I've been able to roll a lot of those builds. So seeing that he's pressuring me early, what I do is I pull all my scholars because research, you know, is important here, but surviving is all in is more important. So I pull my scholars and I actually put them inside of my military buildings. In doing so, it actually makes the buildings produce infantry 100% faster. So in Instead of producing in 22 seconds, I can produce men at arms in 11 seconds, which in a very scary timing like this is mega important because he has hit the third age. He is now ahead of me in score and the Abbasid have one of the most foul, just nasty, nasty pressures in the third age because they can just instant build spring elves like right in front of your base and do a ton of work. But I built two walls here just to be very, very annoying and make him have to push through here. But now we are rapid fire producing units. So we have men at arms coming out. We have the hone blades on its way. Sadly, I did have to pull my scholars from the uh, mosque here to just get the rapid production because I, I could, didn't have time to waste. We also have a Dumbo coming out. So we have a Tower War Elephant, which I figured would be pretty good against like Spearmen and Archers and things like that. Granted, his Spring Alts actually will be a good counter. So in retrospect, maybe against that Abbasid, I might not mess with the Elephant. Maybe just get some like heavy Lancers instead. But you know, it's if you're playing Delhi Sultan and not getting Elephants, I mean, come on, man, you got to have some fun every now and then. Now, the Dome of Face is just mass producing Scholars. And for the rest of the game, I will be doing this. I'll be filling up the Mosque here and pretty much every military building, I will be placing a single... Um, a single scholar in to get that fast rapid fire production however if i was in a more defensive posture or my opponent was attack wasn't attacking me like this i would have double barracks i would have two mosques right now and i would have them both fully filled and i would just be pumping research and tech but against the bassid you know if i was playing like hre or like chinese or maybe saw like english or french who weren't pressuring me i would be teching right and getting all that free research but instead i had to pull my scholars here because if i didn't rapid produce i would have almost no army so i have 15 men at arms here as far as his army, he has 10, plus he does also have four spring alts. But I do have Dumbo, and I do have some crossbowmen coming out as well, who will be giving me some extra armor piercing. As far as the income per minute, we're pretty damn even. You can see, like, right down the center even. He's doing much better on wood, but I am doing better on gold because of the sacred sites. I knew I couldn't take that sacred site, and sometimes with Delhi, like, I knew I still had another one. Why take a fight that, you know, my opponent was just going to probably steamroll me? I mean, I could go out there. Maybe Dumbo could do some work, but overall, I felt like he would have a little bit of an edge there. But, you know, I kind of have to defend here when he comes in my choke, right? So the battle is upon us. The elephant is nearby. Springalds, of course, being very, very strong, able to pick off one of my Delhi soldiers. I wanted to wait for the Hone Blades to get a really powerful timing. It was about a minute away, but, you know, there was no more time. He had two battering rams at my gates, and I figured now it's time to go in. So Dumbo's going to be leading the charge. The men-at-arms will be following up, and the Tower War Elephant Archers will be shooting in. The Camel is here. I don't know if Camel Unease affects the Elephant. I don't think so. And now the Royal Rumble is upon us, and all the Spring Alts are shooting at the big Elephant, which is a little bit unfortunate. So I kind of kept it back a little bit, which was a mistake. Should have had it on the battering ram, so at least it did something. But I do move it in there at the end, and now I grab some of my men-at-arms, knowing I have a little bit faster production. And I'm like, let's just get on these Spring Alts and torch as many as I can. The frontline fighting is going okay. I do have better upgrades, and I do also have the supply lines, right? My men at arms are coming out of the base way, way faster than he can reinforce his army, and we have been able to kill two spring alts so far with my five men at arms here, which is pretty cost effective, and we're going to keep hunting them down while my men at arms now start to push back. Uh, I have four, four upgrades, and as far as his upgrades, let's see, have I gotten any from the blacksmith yet? It looks like, yeah, we got one melee upgrade and the armor upgrade is finishing as well. So sadly, I had to pull my scholar, so I'm not getting like the crazy, crazy good deli tech. But again, against like the Abbasid pressure like this, you have to do this. Otherwise, they're just going to knock you down. If I had kept my scholars researching, I would have like half as many men at arms right now and I would have just straight up lost the game. So here, the men at arms going to be surging past and just trying to push him away from my base. I know I have that nasty, nasty production. But if we could just keep picking these spring alts with my men at arms who do not have forced march yet, which is unfortunate. So Delhi do have an upgrade that can let them like sprint after artillery, which is crazy good. But I don't have a research yet. But do we have the hone blades? Um, taking a look at my men at arms, looks like our most recent force here was pushed back. But I believe now we do have some reinforcements coming in and we have the Conda now. So we don't have the Kalij, which is the, the upgraded variant. That will be finished and that is an insane power spike. My men at arms will go from doing, you know, 14 damage as opposed to his right now, which is uh, 12, right? up to 17. So it's going to be 17 damage against 12. And knowing that I have the superior tech coming, I'm like, you know what? Like we pushed him back. We killed a bunch of spring alts. He only has two left. Let's just like chill out and wall him off again. We have all these troops. And I feel like this is a really underutilized mechanic with Delhi, just like spamming walls. If they're cheap, they're annoying. It's a roadblock for your opponent. And really that costs like 35 wood or something. And that's going to buy me like a good 20 or 30 seconds, which is if you really do the math on it, a lot more units. Now we have a bunch of archery ranges coming out, so going to be spamming crossbows. I saw that he was very, very privy on getting the men-at-arms as well. So let's really just take those guys to Poundtown here. 
Kalij now, I do 17 damage. Crazy good value. My opponent does reach his second golden age. And as far as his tech and his base goes, more or less standard of acid, right? Just like a shit ton of uh, barracks and archery ranges. And then you just don't need to be build siege workshops because you can just spam spring alts from your infantry core, which is incredibly strong. But income per minute, I am a little bit ahead on food. I have transitioned to berry bushes in conjunction with the fishing fleet. Uh, he's doing better on lumber. You know, I just mainly need gold right now. And I do have the sacred side on the other side with a little bit of a gold economy coming. I have grabbed two relics during all this. So I did have my scholars grab some relics around the map and those boys were able to do some good work. So I can still have some vision too. Another nice thing about the walls, if they don't fully destroy them, it does give you some vision. So taking a look at my vision here, you can see, uh, I can see what he's up to. I can see his armies. I more or less know how many spring alts he has. So it's kind of like a little bit of a scouting intel. So the forces are gathering in the front, the great Delhi Men-at-Arms Legion. And I really do think Delhi Men-at-Arms are one of the strongest aspects of the Civ. Uh, you know, HRE does have the better, you know, armor piercing and anti-heavy, but these guys as like a generalist unit against like spearmen and other just more or less general targets do very, very well in conjunction with the upgrades you're getting. So we do have a blacksmith here. Uh, I did build a second blacksmith, so now you can see I'm getting all the upgrades at once. This one mosque still isn't completely full because I figured it was more important to put my scholars into my military infrastructure, and now I'm switching to basic horsemen as well. So going to be going men at arms, backed by crossbows, and then horsemen is going to be my standard variant. So as far as like your resource split, uh, men at arms cost gold and food, so do crossbowmen, so I'm going to be spending a lot there, but I don't really have much to spend my wood on right now, so that's why I built these stables to get some basic horsemen. That would give me a little bit of a dump for the wood I have, and now it's time to push out because I need to put some pressure. I saw him creeping back here, so I knew he was going, so I left one men at arms here just to set up another wall to try and slow his progress, so then I can get a little bit of an optimal position, maybe flank him. As far as eco goes, we're pretty even. I have 52. I would imagine he probably has a little bit more, 66, because I've been investing more in my technology and now we're going to be piling in and trying to pick off some of his units so a couple of his men at arms do go down but the spring alts here in the shadows this is uh, i'm sure many ladder players like myself have nightmares of mass spring alts well i have been kind of having relative success against them with delhi i still don't have the force march yet maybe i should have prioritized that upgrade but we will see how this battle in the black forest unfolds a couple horsemen here waiting and uh, getting ready to join the legion i do have a whole bunch popping out the upgrade taking its sweet, sweet time. The mosque still only has two scholars in it. A little bit of a misplay here. I had a scholar idle and two, uh, two scholars here, which I just had kind of queued up, but I was very focused on this fighting here. But the scholars will be jumping into the mosque in just a second. And here comes the battle. The Delhi men at arms pushing in and the horsemen coming from the north, rushing through the gate, going to be jumping on top of the spring alts here. And even just like basic dark age horsemen are going to be getting in there and, or feudal age horsemen are going to be torching these battering rams, or excuse me, these spring alts. I'm just so excited. They're going to be torching them super effectively. And here you can see we're able to jump on them, running past with the men at arms and just mass producing units, really. Like as soon as I can afford it, we just have units popping out, just rapid fire. Uh, scholars should be jumping in. I don't know why I could have sworn I gave those guys the order there, but we are able to crump that Delhi force pretty effectively. And now we're going to be setting up an outpost, getting a new kind of beachhead here in the middle. The men at arms and spearmen able to surge in and really, really shut those guys down. And now it is time. So yeah, you can see we have six scholars garrison. So yeah, we did get the six. We got three here. And our other mosque, which is set up now, has three as well. So I did finally notice that. And now we're going to be getting that bang in research. And you see, this is why you build extra walls. We set up three extra walls here just to be annoying. Now, if I didn't do this, the battering rams would be in here, like destroying my houses. They might have been able to take out a landmark. But instead, now they're just having a good time getting through palisade walls. And it gives my army time to maneuver around. And we're going to be taking them to the deli shop, baby, as we move in and jump on top of these battering rams and uh, hopefully just torch them down. Now, this is giving the Abbasid a little bit of time to form ranks. In terms of the score, I'm a little bit ahead, but it's not the point of no return for my opponent. He's getting a little bit of tech right now. He's still got a ton of uh, production infrastructure. I am ahead on food, but he is doing very well on wood and gold, which means he's going to be able to spam out probably another like four or five spring alts like almost instantly. In response to this, I set up a keep in the center. I'm like, screw it. I've had enough of these pushes. Spring alts are just god awful at taking down keeps. It'll force him into battering rams, which I'm hoping I'll be able to deal with. And a couple of the troops here just setting up a new gatehouse. Well, now I switch into heavy lancers as well. My gold income is very good. It can sustain men at arms, crossbows, and lancers. Very elite army, but I figured it would be uh, enough to potentially crush this force. So we will see what happens. So the keep is set up. All these workers here will be jumping onto lumber here in a hot second. As far as military production goes, you can see here just basic archery ranges. Knights coming out. I mainly just wanted to rapid produce the men at arms and Dumbo earlier on. So. You know, there's a little bit of a, you know, maneuverability you can do. With very high micro, of course, you could take these guys and move them over to your stables if that's the unit you're going to be switching to. But the men at arms are still the core of my army, and I really think they're the power player. Now, I have several upgrades. My base damage here is 18. You can see this just Olympic sprinter Delhi Scholar here going to be running to the north and taking the relic back to my base. And that's one of the other things about Delhi is they can really take control of relics because their scholars are on the map early, right? So we have three here. 
and we're going to be putting another relic here. So in total, we're going to have four, and I don't think my opponent has really been focusing on religion. Most of the Basset players, in my experience, are just very all-in focused, and they just like to get in there and spam artillery and just win that way. And I find many times uh, that they do neglect like the relics and other aspects of the game. But he does have double mangoes here, which is kind of scary. My army is very vulnerable against mangoes. Granted, I do have a ton of horsemen as well as some lancers, which can dive those bad boys. But the Black Forest is a very choke-heavy map. Now we're going to be bull rushing in. The Mangonel is getting a nice shot, really hitting most of my army here. But we are going to be fanning out. And now we're diving into the backfield with lancers as well as horsemen. We're going to start torching these guys. But the damage he did do with those uh, mangoes was enough to really butter up my front line. But... He is losing very expensive artillery back here against some horsemen. I have the sacreds again, so I was able to accrue the other sacred site during all of this. My men at arms, despite taking that early beating, are able to decisively defeat the Abbasid front line. They have superior upgrades, but he does have a lot of crossbows. He's got these dreaded camel archers, which did debuff the damage of my camel, not my camels, but my horsemen a little bit. But still, we get in, we torch his artillery. If I can keep him on the back foot, I do have the sacred site, which is probably about eight minutes away from capturing right here. So the crossbow's continuing to shoot in. The numbers for my opponent, still pretty good. I mean, he's got a nice little force here, but my crossbowmen, a little bit less numerous, but man, oh man, Delhi can just pump out armies so quick. I just have reinforcements pouring in, a couple horsemen. I forgot to rally over. This scholar is going to be jumping into uh, one of those military buildings here in a second. And we are just continuing to push through this force while the Delhi crossbowmen really, really just laying a hammering. And the lance is couched, and there they go. The camel rider falls. And that probably will be game blouses here in a second. You can see the battering ram stands unequipped. And the Delhi men at arms with their heavy, heavy upgrades. I think they're 2 1 right now, about to be 2 2. Whereas I would imagine most of my opponent's units aren't as upgraded, although it looks like he does have some of the ranged armor upgrades. So yeah, he has been doing a very good job keeping up on upgrades despite that. But I do get them for free, which is quite cool. So more men at arms piling out for my opponent, but more and more reinforcements for myself are coming in. The horsemen shall be riding down my opponent's missile pieces and making sure none of the artillery can come in. A couple of men at arms hanging out, you know, having a little smoke break up there. But alas, it is what it is. This game is quite good. Nice. So the cavalry moving in. This is probably the end for the Abbasid. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Certainly was a pretty interesting battle here in the Black Forest while we pushed through the remnants of his army. And my opponent will be withdrawing at that point. So the main takeaway from that game I wanted to show you was number one, the effectiveness of the Delhi walls, especially on choke point maps. And number two, you know, you be the onion, embrace the onion. You're going to enjoy your life a lot more that way. And uh, secondly, um, what was I going to say? Yes. Men at arms, rapid fire them with the House of Learning upgrade. So you get that curved sword upgrade and man oh man, you can do some really, really nasty work because your men at arms will just vastly outvalue pretty much any other civs men at arms. Uh, of course, it doesn't work as well against HRE. Against the Holy Roman Empire, I tend to spam like crossbowmen more and occasionally you'll mix in men at arms. But as soon as they get those mace upgrades, they start to out trade with you pretty well. But um, yeah, I still think, that, man, the Delhi ones can really, really fight pretty heavily. And if you are being hit with an all in, I, I've been getting a lot of questions lately about how does Delhi respond to all ins? Well, even if you're still in the feudal ages, you can throw your scholars into the uh, barracks and archery ranges and mass produce units really quick. So give it a try. Let me know your thoughts. And again, thank you all for joining. Really appreciate it. We'll see you next time with more battles. And that is it for now.